On this edition of Check 6 Aviation, a few primer touch-ups and installation of the rear spar on the RV-10 horizontal stabilizer. Coming up! Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. I'm so glad and thankful that you're here along on this journey of building the Vans Aircraft RV-10. Today we're finishing up the horizontal stabilizer for the RV-10 and but before we install the rear spar we've got a little bit of touching up to do on the primer and along the way of doing that I'll share a couple of tips that I've learned since posting about this on my Instagram feed if you haven't uh, signed up for the uh, to become a subscriber on our Instagram go ahead and go right up there and take care of that it's a QR code so grab your phone uh, or I'll put a link down below in the comments so that you can go ahead if you're watching this on your phone and head on over there and follow us on Instagram too because I do post the current progress of the build before I can go ahead and get a video up here on uh, the video platforms. Uh, so um, anyway, like I said, we've got some primer touch-ups and then we're installing the rear spar and that is it. This is the final video of the, the Horizontal Stabilizer Series, video number six. And let me tell you, <laughs> I'm finally, I am super stoked about being able to move on to the elevators and then after that uh, the um, the tail cone will be breaking ground pretty soon on the lot across the street for airplane factory version 2.0 uh, probably I hopefully sometime this year if not next year in 2025 so without further ado let's get to it so the fun continues and we're back out in the workshop as you see here yeah the process of riveting up what we left off in the last episode by the way if you haven't seen it yet go click the link up in the upper right corner you'll see it right here and go ahead and refresh your memory because well it it has been a while since i've been in the recording studio and uh putting out a video um a lot's been happening lately uh, started a new job, which uh, is, for the moment, panning out to provide a lot, a little bit more money, which is always a good thing. You never want to really make a, a move down. You always want to move up in one area or another. But let me tell you, oh my God, it is a lot of work. I'm working for Hogan Transports right now on the Family Dollar account, and those trailers are loaded from floor to ceiling and I have to unload the trailers at the stores. So if you have ever purchased anything from Family Dollar, I really do hope that you appreciate the drivers that bring the goods and services, you know, goods that they sell to the stores because man, I, I was sore. My back was sore for a good two weeks before I started getting used to it. And I, I'm, I'm just now starting to getting, getting used to it after being on the job and uh, doing it for well, good, about the good last month. Uh, my first day of orientation was June 11th, 2024. And here we are just a little bit past 4th of July right now. And yeah, so here we go. Uh, I had to change camera angles and yeah, to kind of give you an idea of what's going on because uh, the camera angles that I had set up were not sufficient to do anything to capture what was going on on the uh, uh, with well uh, without doing this you know um, on, on the on the far end so yeah it's just a lot of repetitive work but you know what it, it's it's really good i did have to drill out a number of, of uh holes uh, there there was some final drilling even though these are final sized holes uh the, on along the uh forward spar um i had primed it as you see and the, some of the primer had yeah 
had reduced the circumference of the uh, the hole there so uh, getting the rivet in there was a little bit of a challenge some of those rivets were sitting uh, well as yeah, Paul from Pilot Rhino says sit, uh, sitting a little proud uh, in other words they weren't exactly flush so I did have to take the uh, take a punch and yeah bas basically use the rivet gun as a pneumatic hammer in a way but I didn't just have at it I you know I was able to throttle the you know the trigger a little bit so it didn't go full bore uh, I think it was a tin, 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 tin type thing on the rivet gun to kind of give me that that light tap but uh, definitely checking the progress with each rivet I set I'm kind of going in a line uh, I had to f drill out a number of rivets this is a skill that you definitely do get better with as you go along it is something that drilling out rivets is something that it, it's not um, if you don't do it right you'll mess up the hole and if you mess up the hole list late in the build uh, yeah the results could be catastrophic to the part and you know the component that you're building and you may end up having to start all over from scratch thankfully that has not been necessary so um, kind of going I'm not going in any specific pattern because I'm relying on the interior structure of the skeleton to keep things straight everything's going beautifully so far and here we go I, I actually got a chance to sit down um, for a little bit and just have at it you notice that I am wearing ear protection because you're hearing once it goes it never comes back and that rivet gun can be a little bit loud even though yeah uh, because you're really you're so up close to it and the the horizontal stabilizer is so big that it will act as kind of a an echo and vibration chamber it'll it seems to amplify a number of uh, of sounds there overhead view here uh working on the other side temporary uh, of the horizontal stabilizer i did i do recommend that if you decide to build a workshop decide to build a bench build uh build separate tables for your other your appendages like um your, your other tools like for example you notice that i have the angle the bench grinder on one end and my vice on the other I don't recommend doing that on the same workbench <laughs> because it got in the way of this process and uh, I, I wish I had built a little bit longer but I've said it before uh, in other videos where I, I have I was constricted by space requirements uh, the city of Abilene Texas has a code in the it has an exemption for the building code where if it if the space is under 200 feet you do not need a building permit uh, especially if the and it cannot and it should not be uh connected to power it should be the, the structure should be able to be moved um well that's a different story we won't go into that uh you did see me though just briefly make a note you you can see underneath the horizontal stabilizer my amt logbook that is because in oshkosh 20 uh, it was announced in oshkosh 2023 that the faa changed it uh, was uh, had changed some of the the uh internal rules concerning home belts and that it was now possible to take the time spent uh, assembling your home built aircraft and apply it towards the experience requirement for your airframe and power plant certifications. So, what does this mean? It means that I can go ahead and take and uh, go to the my local FISDO office and say here's my log book here's what i've done i'm building um, a home build aircraft I, i'd like to go ahead and get my amp certification and they'll go ahead and so look it over 
they'll look they'll take a look at some of the pictures that you've had that you've taken uh, any videos that you've posted uh, on online and say okay here's your testing authorization have at it you've got two years to take your uh, general and well I won't be able to get the the power plant license because I haven't gone I haven't dealt with that enough yet but I will be able to take my general and my airframe and I will be uh, upon successful passing of the knowledge exams I can go ahead and uh, and, and also once I uh, talk sit down and have an oral exam with a uh, with a designated examiner then I can go ahead and work as an airframe mechanic on certified aircraft uh, I can I could even intern with an airline I, I believe and if you if you yeah uh, you work for an airline and you know for a fact that this is the process uh, then leave a comment down below I'd love to hear from you uh, the one of the local airlines in my area is Envoy and I know that they're always looking for people to work in their maintenance facilities Taking a little bit of uh, advantage of the really cooler temperatures. Uh, you know, this was just before the beginning of June. Um, my, my, I know this because my daughter's birthday had not happened yet at this point. Uh, my youngest daughter, that is. And um, I, in the process of riveting the inside, I was getting scratches on my primer. And so what it, uh, I posted in the Vans Builders Group and I was introduced to a company that has a, uh, uh, a uh, something that you slip over your bucking bar and let me tell you it it worked pretty well uh, I believe the name of the company was Mountain Air Avion uh, Aviation uh, I mean I'm double checking that and Mount, no, it's Mountain Ride Aviation. And they have a bucking bar bumper. 20 bucks. They're not a sponsor of the channel, by the way. But their customer service is, is really awesome because I had actually ordered the bucking bar bumper for another bucking bar. And I've got the one from Cleveland Tool. And they went ahead and uh, said, oh, okay, just pay for shipping. If the... I, I cannot guarantee if they will go ahead and, and do the same for you it, it, but you just be aware that if you do decide to order from from them that they uh, that there are two separate bucking bar options that you can choose from and uh, the only criticism I have is that the it, in, in some areas like especially around the uh, the the hinge brackets. I wasn't able to really get a um, get a good uh, a good buck on them uh, because of the bucking bar bumper itself. So what I ended up doing was using the squeezer for the rivets that did not that were in between the brackets, but for. You know, around the brackets themselves because the, the bolts were getting in the way I went ahead and switched over to the footed bucking bar the steel one uh, and that seemed to work pretty well because I have I was getting uh, in that around those areas I was getting some lazy rivets and if you don't know what a lazy rivet it looks like this is it yeah we see where it's not sitting quite right in you know the the uh, the shop head or yeah the shop head uh, where you put the bucking bar against is uh, actually kind of folded over and I, I knew that you now that was that's not the way it, it's supposed to be so yeah um, I did find that the squeezer was uh, a bit um, a, a bit faster of course you see here the, the footed bucking bar comes out especially around the bolts and uh, yeah so uh, I did and I did really enjoy put you know the satisfaction of being able to put the the rear spar on this 
on this beast because, well, 2,000 mile journey just to go and get it to see <laughs> probably would have uh, been cheaper to have them ship it to me after all, but that's okay. You know, memories were made on that trip. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then see this video up here. Uh, I did go ahead and uh, document some of it. And I do still have a video in me to put together about my trip to the Evergreen Air and Space Museum and seeing the Spruce Goose. If you want to see that video, let me know and I'll put it together to, for you here very shortly. Squeezing the top, you know, the uh, the other rivets, that, you know, the, the ones that are facing away from me was actually pretty easy because all I had to do is just set them in there. And by this time, I had figured out most of everything as far as how to get this thing finished. Oh, and by the way, I want to I want to send a special thank you for anyone who has subscribed to and become a Patreon uh, patron. Uh, if you haven't, please consider joining the crew. There are some special perks that are that come along with it. You can do that right here. And we're done. The final finished poses come, and quite proud of the accomplishment and this is where we currently are at the completion of hours wise of the 200 uh, 2500 hours that is anticipated in this build process and of course with space challenges come storage challenges so rigging everything up and tying it up to get it up and out of the way up up and away we go so with that, that concludes this video. We're done. Thank you for watching. If you haven't seen any of our uh, the build process, go right here, and we'll talk to you soon.